In this video trainings, we're gonna look at how to overcome the spread problem when scalping. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so question from a subscriber, viewer to the channel, appreciate your question. I love these questions, guys, and because they really do plant the seed to produce a video around that theme. Sometimes I answer the question directly, but sometimes the question can sort of morph into a bigger theme and some more content that we can talk about and expand on and really kind of get into the meat of it. So I appreciate all your questions, guys, comments, likes, share, subscription, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's get down to it. So, uh, Gidman1, he said, hello there, what solution do you suggest for the spread problem in scalping? Uh, one may have a good entry strategy, but the fact that you enter into a serious loss immediately after entering the trade is very discouraging. I wouldn't mind to give back 10 to 15% of my overall profit at the end of the month just to avoid this major hurdle. Is there a way out? Thanks. Okay, so Gidman1, appreciate your question. So the question is basically this. If you are scalping and you, let's assume scalping, we're talking about less than 10 pips target. For me, that's scalping. Others call scalping longer term, but for me, that's what it is. And that's when the spread becomes significant. Because if you imagine something like uh, GBP USD uh, is around, what is it? About one point at the moment, it varies, doesn't it? Euro, US dollar is about the same, but it's normally about 0 0.7, something like that. Uh, 0 0.7 points. I'm talking about for a spread betting here, by the way, but it's all gonna be very similar. We'll address this in a moment. And if you're scalping the indices, DAX is about one. Uh, in fact, DAX is one, most of the places doing FTSE is about one as well. And Dow is between one and two, depending on who you're going with. So the point is, if you're trading and you're looking for say six to 10 ticks, if you're down, let's say we've got an average here of one tick, one pip, one point, when you're going in, that's a significant amount of your profit that is, is going to be eaten away assuming you make a profit when you're scalping now of course the question there or something that was alluded to in that question was hey well i am down one point straight away so to get six points profit i've actually got to get seven points movement so i've got to get a significant percent in percentage terms more movement in the trade for me to come out profitable and if it goes against me let's say you're taking a six point loss then you've only got five points of movement against you so the, the narrower you go with your price targets and your scalping strategy the more consequential or the more influential the spread is on your actual results as you can expect it's pretty much common sense so the question is how do you overcome this so there's two things one is to say, okay, perhaps try to elongate your scalping from those few pips, those few ticks to a wider trade. Now, this is easier said than done, uh, but this is by far the best way of looking at this problem. Now, I'm, looking at another, I'm going to offer another solution for you in a moment that will, will detail if you're staying with this strategy. So hang on if you want to stick, listen, to, listen to that. But... I would recommend that you look for a strategy where you're taking the longer term trade. Now I'm not talking about longer term as in multiple days, I'm say looking for those 20 tick trades, 25, 30 if you can stretch that. So try to find the commonality between your scalps, have a look at all your charts or your previous trades and go right, which trades actually gave a decent move? And you might even find that actually in your scalps, a lot of those you're taking six, seven, eight ticks out of the market and the thing is still ripping on you know 50 ticks 50% uh, you know, of the time or something in which case you've got a great strategy and a great system you don't have to do anything except extend your targets now that's one thing to do extending your targets out adjusting yours and just expanding things reducing the trade quantity reducing the, the the trade frequency but just expanding the targets and cherry picking a little bit more that's one thing to do okay now perhaps you don't want to do that perhaps you've got a great edge in scalping i get it if there's something that's working well for you but you're thinking well you know i'm getting hammered so much on this spread one thing you can do is you can go back to your track record. You can say, okay, if I wasn't paying a spread, and you're probably scalping maybe a couple of instruments, if I wasn't paying a spread, what would be the results? Now, if you were paying no spread and your results were negative and you were, and you were tr trading at a loss, then obviously you don't need, there's no point in going down this path where you may as well find another strategy. If you were profitable on a, on a gross, you could, I suppose you could call it gross, on a gross uh, kind of method, i.e. no spread, 
then you've got something to work on. Because what you can do is you can say, okay, well, I won't trade with a traditional provider. If my volume is reasonable, there are ways of getting around this. Now, you could go direct to a broker that will perhaps offer you direct access into the market or offer you a negligible zero spread, but on a commission. Now, if you went to a broker and did that and traded it as opposed to an over-the-counter kind of spot or a CFD or a spread bear, and you traded it that way, then your commissions can be negotiated. Everything's up for negoti negotiation. There's deals to be done. Specifically or especially if your volume is significant. So if you're trading a significant number of contracts or significant size multiplied by the frequency. Now, size doesn't have to be huge, but it's all really, really, really size times frequency frequency is what they're looking at on a monthly rate. Most of the time they'll say, what, you know, what's the notional volume you're doing in a month? And if it's a reasonable amount, then those commissions can be negotiated. So effectively, if you've got a scalping strategy that's uh, you know, a, a loss-making strategy when you're paying kind of full retail price here, if you like one point uh, on your trades, we're looking at these just examples here. It could be stocks, for, for example, which is slightly different, but let's assume we're talking about uh, FX or indices or commodities or something like that, then and you've got a, and you've got a loss making stress you're very 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 you know fine profit just a slim profit margin then use that data and go okay well let me find a broker where i can have direct access into the market or direct access into a liquidity pool or something or there's no spread or like literally very very minute spread not point not not one or something and pay a commission on that and if you're paying a full price commission it will be close to this anyway but going there and saying hey this is my volume this is what i do i need the spread to be at this I need the total cost of my trades to be at this point here. And they will say yes or no. Or what they may do, which is very common if you ring up and say, hey, I've got a notional volume of X. I do this. They may well say to you, especially if you've got a scalping strategy, we will rebate you a commission over a certain amount. So if you do over a certain amount, they will rebate you back. So that protects them slightly so that you go in there. Because we can all go in there and say, yeah, we're doing you know half a billion a, a, you know, a month in notional volume. And they say, that's great. And you start off when you're doing kind of a few million uh, every day or something. And, and they're like, well, this is, isn't really, or a few million every week. This isn't, isn't really what we agreed. And then they have to go back on the deal. So very often they'll say, Okay, well, if you do over this amount, we will rebate you back to that level. So if you hit that volume target, then we will give you a rebate back. So you've got to be careful you're not trading for the rebates. Now, that's a different thing altogether. But if you know you're going to hit that volume, then you can work on that number and say, well, actually, yes, okay, my profit and loss at the moment is negative. But with the rebate, because I'm trading so aggressively and so actively and putting in those numbers, then I know I'm going to have a positive expectancy. So that's one thing to do. But that's a kind of different route to go down only if you're very, very sure that you've got a good scalping strategy, it's working very, very well for you, and you just need to negotiate the spread, the commission lower, then speak to the brokers, have a dialogue with them. These guys are up for doing business, especially in the manner that I suggested. But if that's not quite what you wanna do, then try to elongate your strategy, stretch it out a little bit more, take those higher uh, longer longer lasting trades and just stretch it a little bit because you're not going to have to change the strategy so much you're just going to have to look for a little bit more and when you start looking at you know 15 20 25 30 pips ticks uh, points profit then the spread becomes less and less meaningful all right hope that's helped if it has thumbs up is appreciated take care guys whatever you're doing i'll see you in the next one bye bye